Amy and I were talking yesterday about this idea of the play, what you were talking about, and this, you know, it's very trendy in, in certain private schools to go back to this very kind of loose, non-academic structure. Um, and yet, what's really happening is that the kids are doing that, and then they're coming home, and they have kind of Amy at home, because <laughs> their parents are then drilling multiplication tables with them, or do, you know, doing some kind of supplemental academic, um, um, you know, uh, exercise with them. And so the kids who are not getting the tutors or who are not getting that academic um, exercise at home are the ones who are just getting the play-based part because it's what Larry said, you can get the car seat, you can get the play-based school, yeah. um, but you're at risk of maybe them not going to Harvard. Well, Could except, I? Yeah. Um, sorry. So, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I was, I was going to talk to Ellen a little yeah. bit about yeah. play-based, but go ahead, Erica, and then we'll go over to Ellen. Well, it's, it's, uh, you know, my career has spanned pre-K through college, and so at Harvard I actually see the kids who have played and the ones who haven't played. So I just want to make a pitch that I don't think these goals are in opposition. And I worry a lot that we forget as parents that the most important way children learn, and I'm talking about young children, is through play. And we have decades and decades of research to back this up from neuroscience, from psychology, from education research. And so I just want to be sure that we're not creating kind of a, um, a false dichotomy. And I can tell you, what, when we see students at Harvard, we see a lot of people who have checked all the boxes, they've done all the worksheets, and then they get to college and they're really adrift because they don't have some of the social and emotional skills that are gonna get them into the 21st century as functional people. And I don't just mean people with good jobs, I mean people with good relationships. So I just wanna make sure that we bear in mind that play, um, speaking as an early childhood educator, I, I really don't think the assumption that play is, is an extra or supplemental is, is an accurate one. I think sometimes play gets misunderstood or sometimes it's, it's you know, it's not um, imp implemented effectively for children. Well, the, I think a lot of people talk about cultivating play, and that concerns me because I think that's another thing that parents are going to try to then micromanage. <laughs> right. that we have to cultivate yes. how exactly. they play and yes. what they're going to do and if it's educational enough in terms of the kind of play that they're doing as opposed to just organic, let kids run around and do their thing. 